Hello, in this video, I'm going to walk through some basic instructions on how to use the interactive uh, Power BI dashboard for COVID-19 data uh, that I am publishing. I'll put the link to this page in the description of the YouTube video. This report that's here in the blog is actually an embedded interactive report. And if you click on the little icon down here to enter full screen mode, you'll see that you then have a full screen interactive dashboard, which you can navigate in order to explore the COVID-19 uh, coronavirus data. It's noted in several places, but this is the data which is available on GitHub, which is being curated by Johns Hopkins. First of all, you'll notice that there's some different calculations over here on the left. As you click and filter things on the screen, those, those values will change. Let's start by changing the date. If we go back a day, you'll see that everything on the screen refilters for the context of where things were at that day. Let's go back a few days to March 11th. And at that point, you'll see the United States had 1,281 confirmed cases, whereas as of, as of the 16th, when this report was updated, there were now 4,632. This pivot chart contains country and regions, and you can expand them to go down to the provinces or states that are at the next level. You can also reorder the columns. So here you'll see the countries and regions that had the largest day over day percent change. Some of them didn't have very many confirmed cases, so small changes can make a big difference. You can reorder by confirmed cases, you can also reorder by all of these other columns and even order them by the countries that have had data in this data set for the longest period of time. If you click on the documentation icon, it'll describe what all these icons mean and how these different things are calculated. For example, with the depth percent, the ones that are red are countries and regions that are more than one standard deviation above the average deaths percent for all other countries and regions on that day. The ones that are yellow are the countries and regions between the median value, which is the midpoint, and the ones that cross the standard deviation threshold. If we scroll down, you'll see that midpoint is actually zero because fortunately there are a lot of locations that still have no deaths. And all of these icons will also change over time as the data gets updated. Moving down to the next chart, on the y-axis, it's graphing active cases and recovered cases. And on the second y-axis, it's graphing total deaths. This was done in order to provide some perspective on how the three values are growing over time. Once again, if you were to click on a specific country or region, it will then filter that graph so you can put it in perspective. Additionally, you can drill up and view the data from a weekly perspective if the daily perspective is a little bit shaky. Moving down to the bottom left, I've added a Pareto chart that does a couple of different things. So first of all, it's tracking the total confirmed cases from a cumulative percent perspective. So you can see that China has 44.6% of all confirmed cases as of March 16th. It'll be interesting to see how that graph changes moving forward. Hopefully all of the bars go down in size. Over on the left, I describe what the different colors of the bars are. So countries and regions that have had zero to 5% day over day percent growth are blue. Yellow is five to 10% orange is 10 to 20%, and red is countries that have had greater than 20% day-over-day increases in confirmed cases. Last, we have a scatter chart. Let's go ahead and expand that. And here you'll see we have all of the countries that are in the data set, and we're plotting the percentage of confirmed cases that have died on the y-axis versus days since first case on the x-axis. Since different countries are going through their epidemic curves at different times, I thought it would be helpful to view the data from the perspective starting when they had their first confirmed case. So the bubbles to the left of the chart 
have had fewer time since their first case. For example, Guatemala has only had three days, whereas countries to the right have had more time passed since their initial case. China has had 55 days, which I believe is not the full duration of China's data. It's just the duration of the data in the data set. One thing that's nice to see here is that as time progresses, the death percent goes down and hopefully that trend continues for all countries that go through this epidemic. The size of the bubble represents the number of confirmed cases and the color of the bubble represents a tiering of the death percent. To page two, you'll see we have the same tiles over on the left-hand side and those values will change if you click on different countries or if you control click, you can click on multiple countries. But this page has a slightly different purpose. Here in this slicer, you can actually select the countries that you would like to compare. So for example, if we'd like to add Mexico to this data set, and maybe we'd like to add Germany, And if you want to clear the filter so you have all countries and you can start from scratch, you can just hit this little eraser right here on the filter. If we take a look at this graph over here on the right, you'll see the count of active cases for China go up over time. The calculation I used for active cases was total confirmed cases, subtracting recovered cases, and then subtracting total deaths. Fortunately, you can see China's active cases are on the decline. Unfortunately, total active cases around the world are increasing as new countries are exposed to the pandemic. Moving back to the report, you will see that the day over day percent change in confirmed cases only went up 0.04% for China. That's very good news. Hopefully other countries see similar trends sooner rather than later. On this chart, you'll see some arrows here in the upper right. If you wanted to, you could actually drill up and view this data from a weekly perspective. As more data gets accumulated, there might be value in using this a little bit more. Down in the bottom left, I've put an interactive scatter chart. What's nice about this chart is we can actually view the progression of active cases versus total deaths when we have days on the play axis. I'll go ahead and hit the play button and explain what's happening. With the data starting in January, we can see the progression of China as active cases increased and total deaths also increased. If we hit the pause button, we can see each of the different days and how it's progressed over time. Let's let it continue to play. And what's interesting here is that as the active cases begin to go down, some of those active cases still do pass away. So the total deaths still goes up. If I were to pause it again, you'll then see that pattern here on the screen. Let's let this play out. And you'll now see that other countries have begun their own journey as the pandemic progresses. Let's move back to the report. One more chart down here in the bottom right. Let's go ahead and expand it. This one's pretty simple. We're looking at the death percent versus days from the first case. What this is doing is dividing the number of confirmed deaths by confirmed cases on each day that the data is being reported. It's interesting to note that at the time of this video, the US has actually begun to decline a little bit after seeing a troubling spike on day 43.
If we move to the documentation page, this is where you can see what the different calculations are, what the different colors mean, and you can also click on links to go see the Johns Hopkins dashboard, which is uh, absolutely fantastic and has everything on a nice interactive map, and then also the data set that they are curating and making available for public use. I'll try to update this interactive dashboard daily. Please pass along any suggestions or recommendations on how I might be able to make it better or add new perspectives that could provide useful insights.